If you want to take pictures or videos tide pooling, one of the more common options people choose recently is the Olympus TG Tough. It's a great little waterproof camera with built-in GPS. Unfortunately, it is terrible at taking macro pictures in the tide pool out of the box. But with one piece of hardware and a few settings changes, it can become a solid tide pool companion and you will be able to take truly stunning photos. First, we will jump right into what you need to enable you to quickly take great tide pool pictures with the Olympus. And after that, I will explain why these things are needed. The critical first step is acquiring the $50 FD1 diffuser from Olympus. Link in the description below. While the diffuser is apparently compatible with all of the Olympus TG camera models, 1 through 6, it is only supported at a software level on models 4 through 6, and I would suspect it won't work very well for tide pooling without software support. So you need to have at least a TG4. Also, note that you must upgrade your firmware on the TG4 to at least version 2.0. TG5 and TG6 will work out of the box with just a settings change. While you could use the other tips I will describe later to get better pictures, I highly recommend getting the diffuser if you can. It will save you a lot of time trying to take photos and you will have a much less frustrating experience. Installing the diffuser is as easy as holding down the silver unlock button on the front of the camera and twisting the small ring around the lens that comes with the camera until it pops out. Then we install the diffuser by pointing the pointy part of the diffuser straight up and pushing the diffuser into the ring around the lens. If it is aligned correctly, it should fit in without needing to apply force. Then just rotate it to the right until it clicks and stops rotating. Now that you've got the diffuser and installed it, it's time to make a few settings changes. So now we need to actually enable the diffuser in the settings. I thought I had read once somewhere that it could happen automatically, but I have not experienced this on either the TG5 or TG6. If you don't enable the diffuser in the settings, you will get very dark pictures, most likely. To enable the FD1 diffuser, we first need to switch to microscope mode and then select the microscope sub mode. Then we press the OK button in the middle of the D-pad. Then scroll down, again using the D-pad, until you reach the accessories section. Then move the selection right until FD1 is highlighted, then press OK. Your screen should now show FD1 in the top center. The diffuser should now be fully functional when in microscope mode, and for taking pictures of small things, that's definitely where you'll want to be. Your pictures will already now be easier to take and turn out better, but there is one more setting to be aware of if you really want to get it working well. Getting the brightness or exposure right, especially when taking pictures of very small things, will still be difficult as the flash will often be too strong and wash out your picture but the camera does provide a setting for adjusting the strength of the flash. It's unfortunately a bit tedious, especially since this is something you'll sometimes need to do frequently in the tide pools, but nonetheless, it will give you much better results, so it's good to know how to do it. To adjust the flash strength, just press the lightning bolt on the D-pad, the right button. This will bring up the flash menu. You can select different modes by moving right or left with the D-pad. The two settings I usually use are fill in and manual value. Fill in does not have any further refinement, but for manual value, you'll need to know how to adjust it. It's a little bit quirky, but to adjust the manual value, first select it with the D-pad, then press the info button, which is above the D-pad. Now you can adjust how strong the flash is by pressing up or down on the D-pad and pressing OK when you've got the value you want. It takes a little getting used to, but with some practice, it'll be a little bit more natural. I'm usually in the range from 1 quarter to 1 16th strength, but it's mostly a trial and error process. Adjusting the value based on if your photos are coming out too light or dark. I will go more into this at the end of the video if you're curious, but this should be enough to get you going, to get you tide pooling and getting great pictures. The one last thing to know is that the camera often needs additional light for the autofocus system to work. Before you take the picture, 
I haven't found a good way for the camera to provide this light, so we just bring flashlights or headlamps with us to do the job. You can tell when it needs more light because the autofocus will be doing a lot of hunting, moving in and out, or if it just can't seem to focus on your subject at all. Just shine some light at your subject and you'll notice the autofocus immediately working better. It can still be challenging if your subject is only a few millimeters long and the lens is nearly touching it, in which case we use a waterproof flashlight to get some light in for the autofocus, but this isn't strictly necessary. And before we get into the reasons behind the process we went over, I'll just give you a couple tips about the GPS. If you want to capture the GPS positioning of your photos, you just need to make sure the camera's GPS has a fix before snapping the picture. When the GPS is working on getting a fix, but hasn't yet, there will be a satellite icon on the bottom left of the screen that is flashing. Once it has a fix, the icon stops flashing and becomes solid. If you're having issues with it taking too long to get a fix, you can also try using log mode, the switch on the top of the camera, which is supposed to improve the situation, although you may need additional software. We haven't tried this much since it really eats up battery and changing batteries in the tide pool is not ideal. You may also get faster GPS fixes if you update your camera's firmware from Olympus, as that can provide more recent information on the position of satellites, allowing the GPS system to find them quicker. So now, you should be ready to go tide pooling and take some great photos with a bit of practice, but why did I suggest the things I did? The reasons come down to lighting. Because of where the flash is on the Olympus, it just doesn't work well with underwater macro photography. The light doesn't penetrate evenly to your subject in a lot of cases, and the camera doesn't seem great at adjusting the shutter speed to fit with the strength of the flash it uses. Olympus could probably fix the latter issue in software, but the positioning of the flash and its concentration is what really requires the diffuser. So really the thing to keep in mind when the camera is struggling to give you the results you want is to check the lighting first. If the camera isn't getting enough light for autofocus or for the photo itself, you won't get good results. But both things can be fixed as we discussed earlier. We spent many frustrating trips to the tide pools, photoing nudibranchs and other small subjects before I started being able to piece together what was causing the camera to struggle to take good pictures. Once I realized they were all related to lighting, I looked into how to adjust the flash strength and also discovered the Olympus had created the waterproof diffuser, which seemed like it would be exactly what was needed, and fortunately, it was. So hopefully, those tips will help get you great tide pool macro photos. If you have any further tips or questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and we'll respond.